in this second video on American culture in the 1990s, we'll look a little more at daily life, what people wore, and and styles, and music, and the movies, and, you know, pop culture. And we'll also look at some of the problems that existed in the 1990s. In any event, despite computers, television certainly remained a staple of American life. Cable TV remained popular, but as the 1990s passed, more people turned to satellite broadcast. Direct TV launched its first commercial satellite digital platform in 1994. Of course, today you can see satellite dishes on homes all over the place. In the late 1990s, there was the first TV digital recorders, TiVo, so people could watch their shows and, and tape them or record them and then watch them later on, all digital. When it came to what was shown on TV, Nickelodeon was big with a, a number of iconic shows, including Rugrats, first shown in 1991 and later made into a movie in 1998. The Simpsons, an animated cartoon show made up made for adults as much as children, that had launched in 1989, but it, it grew in popularity throughout the 1990s, and it eventually became one of the longest-running shows ever, and was also made into a movie. With the proliferation of new media technology, the Australian media baron Rupert Murdoch founded Fox News in 1996. He hired the Republican political strategist Roger Ailes, shown on the left here next to Murdoch, to create a sort of an alternative to cable news networks, CNN. And he wanted to appeal to conservatives who felt that their views were not adequately reflected in the media. The growth of partisan media outlets, both on TV and on the Internet, have arguably widened political discord in modern America. Situation comedies or sitcoms remained popular during the 1990s with shows such as Murphy Brown on the top left, uh, Seinfeld on the top right, and Friends uh, in the middle below. In regard to late night TV, David Letterman remained popular. His quirky talk show, The Late Show, ran from 1982 all the way to 2015, and you can see that on the left. It rivaled the traditionally dominant The Tonight Show, hosted by the iconic comedian Johnny Carson, shown on the top right. When Carson retired in 1992, the comedian Jay Leno replaced him, and you can see Jay Leno on The Tonight Show on the bottom right. The idea of reality TV grew during the 1990s, most notably with MTV, Music Television's The Real World, which premiered in 1992. The idea was to place strangers in a confined space or challenging situations, and with editing, have them comment over what happens, sort of narrate what happens. Movies, of course, remained popular, and the decade of the 1990s produced some major blockbusters, including Jurassic Park, 1993, Forrest Gump, 1994, and Lion King, the same year. You can see them left to right in the order here. In 1990, the Motion Picture Association of America changed its movie rating, replacing the No Children Admitted rating of X with the new NC-17, which meant No Children 17. You know, but by 1990, the X rating had stigmatized some explicit films as just pornography and of no cinematic value. And so that's why they made the switch. Perhaps the greatest seller in literature was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the first in a series that was released in 1997. The author, the British writer J.K. Rowling, had been destitute as she wrote it. With the many sequels and movies that followed, let's just say J.K. Rowling has prospered in the years since with the franchise. During the 1990s, book clubs grew in popularity. Music during the 1990s remained eclectic, but was still dominated by pop music with groups such as the Spice Girls, shown to the left. Hip-hop continued to prosper as well. Perhaps as a reaction to pop music, so-called grunge music and style also proliferated, most notably with Nirvana and its lead singer Kurt Cobain. Centered in Seattle and Pacific Northwest, grunge combined elements of guitar-centric punk and heavy metal and was characterized by casual, comfortable dress. You can see that on the bottom right. So-called raves were popular, essentially large dance parties with the DJ or live music playing electronic dance music, often accompanied by lights and other special effects. 
clothing and hairstyles in the 1990s remained as eclectic as the music, the decade witnessing a trend towards more relaxed business attire. Increasingly, large companies instituted what they called casual Fridays, allowing their employees to dress more casually. This trend was increased by the growth in the technology sector and large companies in California's so-called Silicon Valley, the, where most, a lot of the tech companies were centered. Fads quickly spread through America, including the popularity of small little teddy bears called Beanie Babies, shown on the left. People would collect them, and they were first released in 1993. And in 1998, the uh, Christmas gift of the year was a so-called Furby, which was a, a battery-powered little toy that uh, could make noises, and w when you speak to it, it would respond, and if nobody spoke to it, it would speak up on its own. And you can see that on the right. Malls remained popular in America during the 1990, most notably with the 1992 construction of the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota. The mall included an array of attractions besides just restaurants and shoppings, including things like a theme park with rides. First introduced by Jeep in the 1980s, the popularity of sports utility vehicles, known uh, by its acronym SUVs, they more than doubled from 1900 to 1998. As multiculturalism spread, feminism remained a strong component of the 1990s culture as well, reflected in numerous ways, from TV series such as Sex in the City, you can see on the far left, to movies such as Thelma and Louise, left middle, to plays such as the vagina monologues in 1998, sort of the right middle, and uh, finally into sports such as the celebration of the American victory in the 1990 Women's World Cup when Brandy Chastain uh, celebrated by throwing off her shirt, and you can see that on the on the right here. Obesity continued to go throughout America in the 1990s, best represented perhaps by the popularity of the fast food chain McDonald's supersized meals, which were first introduced in 1992. You go and you order, and they say, you want to supersize it? And you say, yeah, and they give you extra fries and extra soda. Celebrity culture continued uh, as well, with various events capturing the nation's attention, including when, in 1994, the Olympic skater Nancy Kerrigan, you can see on the left, was attacked by the boyfriend of a rival named Tonya Harding, uh, shown on the right. In 1997, the tragic death of Princess Diana, uh, the uh, estranged wife of uh, Prince Charles, in a car accident in Paris, and her subsequent funeral, that, that dominated the news, and you can see that on the, in the bottom right here. Another horrible incident that captured America's attention and uh, sort of illustrated the nation's celebrity culture was the 1995 murder of former uh, football star O.J. Simpson's wife. Uh, she had come home, and uh, somebody had attacked her and left her dead there. Uh, Simpson was missing and uh, they he was a suspect and he was in a white Bronco and he sort of escaped from a, a slow escape from police on the highways and crowds would form cheering it was all shown by on, live on television and it in time led to uh, a, a trial uh, you can see some of the right there uh, famously is playing on gloves that were tied to the killer and he was acting like it didn't fit and said if it, his lawyer said if it doesn't if it doesn't fit you must acquit but anyway OJ Simpson was acquitted at trial and uh, that that took it took a you know a lot of uh, America's attention racial justice and intolerance remained a problem with several incidents during the 1990s capturing public attention in 1991, Los Angeles police were called on video beating an unarmed black man named Rodney King, who was offering no resistance. The police officer's acquittal the following year led to riots, and you can see the riots on the right here. In 1996, two heterosexual men lured a gay man, Matthew Shepard, shown on the left here, out of a bar and beat him, leaving him tied to a fence in a rural area. Two cyclists found Shepard the following day, and he was rushed to the hospital, but he died. I should end this second uh, video on American culture in the 1990s, the one looking at uh, pop culture and the way people lived, 
by noting that at the end of the uh, end of the decade, uh, the end of the century, indeed the end of the millennium, uh, 1999 to 2000, there was a huge celebration. It was a party like it was 1999, and it's one of those instances where everybody sort of remembered where they were. In any event, this concludes the second of the two videos on American culture in the 1990s.